Alright guys, today I wanted to do a bit of a different video. Um, I tried to talk about this earlier, but I don't think I really, great, really gave it the justice that it deserves. And there's just a lot to talk about in this. And I'm referring to Hiram's Boot CD. Now, what is Hiram's Boot CD? Well, the simplest way to describe it would be a massive, massive collection of freeware on a CD image. It's insane. There are tools that you can boot with. There's stuff that you run directly from Windows. It's insane what you can do with this. And if you happen to have a bunch of bootable CDs for different software like Memtest or Derek's Boot and Nuke or NT Password Reset or Windows Memory Test or BART PE, which is like a bootable Windows XP thing, or a, some kind of Linux recovery like Parted Magic or some type of like third-party bootloader software like Plot Boot Manager or Con Boot or something like that. It's all on this disk. It's crazy what they put on here. I don't know how legal it is, but it's great. So, I guess the first thing to talk about would be how to get it. And I am downloading from HirensBootCD.org, which strangely is not the official site for Hirens. The official site is Hiren.info, but they don't have any downloads. I assume this is for some type of legal reasons, but whatever. Anyway. You go to the HiremsBootCD.org site, you can see what they've added, changelog, I mean look at all this. Some new stuff for Mini XP, Tor Browser, uh, what else do I recognize? They got a battery monitor now, it's insane. A thing to remove all McAfee software, that's beautiful. And these, this is just Windows software here. It's not, not even the, like, the DOS software, which I will get to. And there's actually so much software that I'm probably going to have to do about three or four videos about Hirons just to get in all the information. There is so, there really is that much information. And so right now, we are waiting on this download to finish. And when you go to download Hiram's Boot City, it's generally five to six hundred megabytes, always under seven hundred megabytes, because it's a CD image. I don't understand why people hate optical media so much. I think it's great. So right now we are waiting on this download to complete. I should mention that there are other sites you can download Hiram's Boot CD from. Uh, there might be different versions of it on whatever your favorite torrent site is, but some of those will have uh, different commercial software. You might have some with like Norton Ghost or Acronis or Spinrite or something like that. And a lot of those are over 700 megabytes, so they won't fit on a CD. And just for the sake of this video, it's much easier to have the, quote, official version of Hirons. But, as you'll see in a minute, it's meant to be changed. So anyway, our download completed. Let's go ahead and extract this uh, zip file. Should have put 7-zip on here. Okay, so now we have a variety of files. Let's see, we have a, of course we have a change log, which is nice. Another text file. We have our main Hiram's Boot CD image. We also have a customization tool. You could add, I guess you could add other ISO images to this. Maybe you could add other programs or something. I'm not too familiar with it. Not going to change it up, but you can make your own Hiram's Boot CD. It's great. Pick whatever uh, keyboard layout you would use, and then you can make your new ISO image. And we have a Burn to CD executable, which, in case if you're using XP or don't want to use 
Windows's uh, ISO burner, you can use this, and it'll burn a CD for you. Very nice. But we already have a ISO image of Hiram's boot CD. As you can see, here it is. And we will discuss this a bit later. But now, let's boot into Hiram's. So we have the disk in the drive. We are rebooting. And here we are, the main Hiram's boot CD menu. And it's fairly intuitive, fairly user friendly. You just use the uh, use the arrow keys, move around. First option, boot from hard drive, which just boots into whatever you have. Mini Windows XP, we'll discuss later. DOS programs, discuss later. Linux, discuss much later. Now, uh, some main menu tools. We have Windows Memory Diagnostic, which does not work. I do not know why. I think it's because it's on a virtual machine, but as you can see, you run it and it gives you some kind of problem. Oh, well, maybe not. Oh, there it goes. Unrecoverable error. So, we have to reset. Anyway, we have Memtest86 Plus, and this will t uh, test the volatility of your memory. Pretty helpful. And of course, it's, it has these strange timings, 0 megahertz, probably because it's on a virtual machine. If it wasn't virtual, you would see uh, something more normal. Let's reset. NT offline password changer. Very useful. Although I have no idea how to use it myself. Apparently you can edit the uh, the SAM file in Windows. This will let you essentially change passwords on local accounts. Like I said, I don't know how to use it. I'll show you a different way to do it that's much easier than this later on. Reset. Con boot, a useful tool if the host computer has Windows XP, which this doesn't. And this is the free version of Con boot, which only works on XP. Now, you may not have heard of Con boot, but what it does is essentially it will hook the kernel like a rootkit and allow you to log on to a Windows account without any password or with anything as the password. And this virtual machine does not have a user account with a password, so it wouldn't matter anyway. Let's reset. Seagate Disk Wizard, which is apparently a Cronus home. But notice this Alt plus T plus O plus K. So we fire up Seagate Disk Wizard. There it goes. And it's telling you, oh no, you have to have a Mac Store Seagate drive. Now, nobody's sadistic enough to actually own a Seagate or Mac Store drive. So you can press Alt, T, O, and K. And there you go. You're in a rebranded version of a Cronus Home. You can clone your hard drive. You can somehow add a new hard drive. I don't know why you need this to do that. The wipe a disk. Show log. Oh, I only have one drive. Is there some way you can... Oh, I can do backup. My computer. See, there's my drive. It's all there. Very nice. Very nice software. Let's go ahead and reset and check out whatever the hell's next. Plop Boot Manager. Funny name. It's really only useful for older computers that cannot boot from USB natively. So I assume you would just plug in your USB drive, 
go to USB, and it would fire it up. But, of course, no USB drive in here. Reset. Smart Boot Manager. What the hell is that? Well, it looks like you can change some of the uh, the flags on a hard drive to set something as bootable or not. Record settings. Boot previous MBR. Boot IT. No, don't save. Reset. There's really just a lot of software on here that I don't know what it does. But, Jesus Christ. Fix NTLDR is missing. Another tool for XP mainly. And somehow if your bootloader gets corrupted, you can go through all of these. And it'll help you boot Windows. Reset. Everyone's... Favorite hard drive wiping tool, Derek's Boot and Nuke. I'm not sure if it's going to work in a virtual machine or not, and that's the problem. And of course, this can do different types of wipes on hard drives if you like. You can do one pass, three pass, 35 pass. It's insane. And it doesn't work. Probably because it's in a virtual machine or some type of deal with the connection because I think it detects it as a SCSI drive or some bullshit. Anyway, I'll show you a different way to use DBAN later on. Let's reset. Alright, we have a custom menu which you use at H the Hiram's Boot CD customizer tool to get to. And you can boot from whatever partition or MBR that you'd like. All very nice. Reboot shutdown. Let's go back. And I believe this is going to wrap it up for the first part video. Uh, next one is going to be DOS. Then I'll get to Windows and finally finish up on Linux and give you some final thoughts. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned. And we'll see you soon.